Good evening, everybody. Good evening. This is a study I did a long time ago. When I first got here, <clears throat> I was thinking about it in the past couple weeks. And uh, the Lord put it on my heart that I should share it with you also. Amen. Because some things we do so that we can preach on them. Some things we do just for the knowledge. Thanks for God puts things on our heart just so that we can learn this so later on down the road we have it. And uh, we're going to go to John 3.16. And the study that I conducted was the 3.16s. <clears throat> so if you notice, most of the books in the Bible have a third chapter. And there's a large portion of them that have a 16th verse. And it's super cool, which is what we're going to look into quite a bit, about that all of them are in common with each other. Amen. And it's pretty cool. And I'm pretty excited to share it with you. But we all know John 3.16. <clears throat> but we're going to go and read other verses. But the 16th verse is what we're going to concern ourselves with. And it's pretty cool. I'm pretty stoked. All right. <clears throat> In uh, John chapter 3, verse 16, I know we can all recite this. It's one of the most famous ones there is, but we're going to read. And if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's word. Amen. Uh, Amen. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten <coughs> Son, that who, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Yeah. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. Amen. Awesome. All right, let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, and again, Lord, for this evening that we have. I just pray, Lord, that though I just be nigh, know I am nothing, Lord. I am dust. I am a sack of dirt. I just pray, Lord, that you, be, you, you would use me this evening to portray your message, Lord, that you give me the words you would have me to say, that they would not be shone up here. But it would be the full demonstration demonstration of your Holy Spirit working through me, my Amen. Yeah. to convey your word as you would have the Father. I pray that you convict and uh, use this message to convict and encourage us, Lord, to keep pressing toward that mark and the high calling of God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As well as I pray for the continuance of the service, of the songs that are going to be sung, the message that's going to be preached, Lord, and the rejoicing that's happening right even right now, Father. We just thank you so much for that full and perfect salvation we have in Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love that you shed on us abundantly every single day through him, Lord. We thank you for the blessings we see and the little ones that we don't even know about, Father. Amen. We thank you so much for loving us. And we thank you that all gifts come from the Father of lights in whom there is no virulence, neither shadow or turn. We thank you so much that you're faithful, even if we aren't. Amen. And all these things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, in the <coughs> trials and traverses of looking into this message for the 316s, it took me a long time, and I'm not just I'm not saying that so that you're like, oh, well, he puts a lot of dedication in it. It's just there's a lot to it, and there's a lot of angles to cover. But I'm gonna, we're going to go as quickly as we can, and I'm only going to give you a piece of what I got, and I think it's it's as long as the Lord's going to wants it to be for one. But uh, we're going to start right now. <clears throat> All right, in John chapter three, verse sixteen it says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him." Should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's God is, God's love is eternal. It is pure. It is full. It is everlasting. It is unflinching, uncompromising. It is forever. Yeah. And it's awesome. That should not perish, but have everlasting life. Not those flames of hell that await those who do not believe. Because say, uh, hell, believe it or not, well, the Bible teaches that hell was made for Satan and his angels. Mm -hmm. And it was not even close to being intended for us. Yeah. As it says down there, he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Right. 
It says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And this is the message he preaches continuously. Is that, and this is the fact that we see even in relationships or the world today. That this the word, the Bible is a sword as it teaches. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bring you closer together. And you're going to love each other more than you ever knew you could. Or it's going to rip you straight apart. Yeah. That's just how the sword works. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. And in 9 and 19 it says, uh, And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. And that is... That's the dichotomy we have that makes up the person. It's two parts of a whole. We just get over it. It's the flesh, and we're always going to struggle against it. I know that every one of us can tell a story about, and actually every our everyday lives where we struggle against the flesh. It's just how it is. But yeah. pray, thanks be to God who giveth us the victory yeah. through Jesus Christ our Lord, even every day. Amen. <clears throat> and it says in uh, 21, But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be. Might may be made manifest. That's manifested in the light because there's nothing hid from light. There are no shadows in light. Mm -hmm. That they are wrought in God. And yeah. that, see, and that's that's what uh, I think Brother Damon was his devotional this morning is he is the vine and we are the branches, and it's God who will, will, wants us to bring forth much fruit. And the only good fruit, and he said, without me you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. The only good fruit and the only good thing we can do are going to be wrought in God in Amen. accordance with his will and always in accordance. Yeah. Now we're going to go to, let's go to Hebrews, in chapter 3, okay, and in 10. Okay, Hebrews chapter 3, starting in verse 10. But the focus of the, uh, this entire message is the 316s. Now, in Hebrews chapter 3, and verse 10, it says, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, he's talking about those that went into the, went into the wilderness. I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. And that rest... Is, is our rest. It's Jesus Christ. And on the seventh day, God rested because all of his works were complete. That is a picture of us for every single day, for the rest of forever, until time runs out. Is We have his rest. It's a promise. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, any of you an evil, in any of you, forgive me, in any, in, in, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if we will hear his voice, and the 15 16s are referenced. While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not at all came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear, swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Yeah. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. As Brother Clifford, Clifford and, much, and much better men than me have said, Gen Genesis 1-1 is salvation. Because you have to believe without a shadow of a doubt that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. That's yes. just the bottom line. Seeing isn't believing, believing is seeing, as Paul writes in Hebrews, actually chapter 11. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go back to 15 and 16 in chapter 3. It says, uh, while, it, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. And that's what he's talking about. Is some of the people in Egypt heard mm -hmm. and did not believe. And did not go with Moses. And some people said that we would hear more of this matter. As Paul has a pastor at this morning in Mars Hill. One of three things is going to happen. You're going to believe. You're going to say, I want to hear more of this matter. Or you're going to say, that guy's insane. I don't want to hear anything else. And some of the people have said we would hear more went with Moses. 
And they died in the wilderness because of unbelief. Yeah. But some of them didn't go at all. And then there was a message of salvation. It says God preached the gospel to Abraham. And what is the gospel? The gospel is Jesus Christ. That's right. It's always been him. It will always be him forever and ever. Praise him forever and Amen. ever. We're going to go to the Old Testament. And this is Zephaniah. Zephaniah, hey guy. Zechariah, Malachi. Malachi, Zechariah, hey guy. And Zephaniah. Alright. <clears throat> and then Zephaniah 3.16, aren't they enough? Just kidding. Okay, now we're going to start in, in 13. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall the deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the, with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments, he hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Yeah. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, and he will joy over thee with singing. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? And yes. This is a promise, and who is, you know, Jerusalem? Who is who is Zion? Well, we all know spiritually, spiritual Israel, the Israel of God is the church. Now listen, church, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, but to the church, fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. And this is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's a promise that we have even right here in Zephaniah. It says, fear thou not. Let not thy hands be slack. It's like I, when you get saved and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and therefore and are baptized and are entered into the Israel of God, which is the church. And now we've got work to do. You know, it's super cool. Jesus gave you 33 and a half years thereabouts, his life, his death, and forever and ever his resurrection because he liveth forever and ever. We can give him a little time by our yeah. time in some of the ministries. Or even a ministry in your daily life. Amen. All right, then we're going to go to Ephesians. It's pretty cool. If you ever want to do the study of the 316s, there's a lot of them. chapter 3 we're going to start at verse 9 and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning we're going so far back in these verses just for context I don't just want to go to all of the 316s and then explain to you how they are I think it, it, it could be very very easily pulled out of context so I'm giving you as much context as I can without reading three chapters back you know what I'm saying so Amen. that's why we're doing that <clears throat> and to make all men see what is the fellowship of of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Christ Jesus, who yes. is the Word. And the right. Word. He's going all the way back to the beginning with this. To the intent, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers and heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, which is in Christ Jesus, who is the Word. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We're family, man. Amen. Uh, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man for mm -hmm. god so loved the world isn't that wonderful mm -hmm. that Amen. we can be partakers of that glory mm -hmm. he welcomed us into the kingdom of his dear son 
who washed us from our sins in his own blood, the Bible says. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? These three, the three sixteenths will get you. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. By faith. It's not anything physical. The Jews are in their religion were constantly asking him, well, will you show us a sign? Or give us a sign of something that you're, something special or something like that. And he says, oh, adulterous and stiff-necked generation to you, there will be no sign given. There isn't anything other than belief. We have it in our hands. It's wonderful. But 316, Dylan. All right, then we're going to go to Acts. And this is actually one of, if I go the right way, this is actually one of my favorite situations the Bible gives us. And in Acts chapter 3, yeah, and we're going to start in verse 6. I'm going to tell you this ahead of time because I'm so thankful. And if, uh, please forgive me if I weep while we're reading this. But I thank God that there was a Peter in my life. Amen. You know? All right. Uh, and, uh, Acts chapter 3, starting in verse 6. It says, then Peter said, there's a man begging alms and he's, he can't walk. He's been laying in this bed forever. It says, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 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 if I could get the name, rise up and walk. And he took him by the, by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the, at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed. Held Peter and John. All the people ran together unto them. In the porch that is called Solomon's. Greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it. He answered unto the people. Ye men of Israel. Why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly unto us. As though by our own power or holiness. We had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, wherefore we are witnesses." And his name through faith, oh, and his name through faith, in his name hath made this man strong, Amen. whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And that not that wonderful, that 316? I'm so happy that somebody loved me enough to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm super happy that whomsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. I'm so happy that whomsoever he'll save. It's not something that was predestinated like we're all meant to be. It's not, it's not by anything that we can rot in our own works. It's not anything because I'm special or I was born that way or I'm stronger and faster and smarter and braver than you. It's because I believe Jesus. Amen. I believe Jesus Christ and what he did it for me. Thank you. Right. I believe God's word. Amen. I know that it's infallible. And I know that it's beautiful. And in Amen. his name, through faith, in his name hath made the man strong. We, you were that weak man. You were that blind man. Right. You were that leprous man. And then Jesus Christ came into your life and you could not see. And now you can see. Amen. You could not walk. And now you can run it faster than anybody. You were leprous and diseased. And now you are healed. He Amen. is a great physician. Amen. And right. physical healing has very little to do with it. Amen. I know I was blind. If he that hath eyes, let him see. And Sean Kadler, by the endowment of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior, I can see. Amen. And I can hear. And I can walk. Praise God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to go to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 3, 
in 16. Daniel 3, 16. Immediately his legs and ankles received strength. <laughs> It didn't take a couple of days, you know, for Jesus to set in. It happened immediately. Amen. All right, in Daniel 3.16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this is, uh, they get into some trouble because they refuse to worship Nebuchadnezzar. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so he gets them, he says, whoever doesn't bow down to this idol, I'm going to throw them in the pit of the fiery furnace and uh, burn down their house and turn it into a dunghill, I think he says. This is the very first threat they received from him because he's a very angry man. All right, and uh, so they come before him because they've been caught not worshiping the idol that he set up. Okay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. This is exactly the attitude we should share with the yes, Lord. Yes, amen. Why are you so happy? Why are you singing? Well, I'm not careful to answer you in this matter because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then, and then I preached a message on this a little, little while ago. We're going to continue reading now. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Amen. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the fiery the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire, fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king, astonished, and rose up, was astonished, and arose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto, unto the king, Drew, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the oh, I see four men loose. Forgive me. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fiery Amen. furnace. Amen. This is where it's at. We're not careful to answer you in this matter. <laughs> it says, If it be so, our God will deliver us. But if he doesn't, just know this, Nebuchadnezzar, that even if he doesn't, we will not serve your gods. I will not conform to the image of this world. Amen. We will be transformed by the renewing of our minds to the glory of God in the heart. Right. This, this is where it's at. Right. Because as I preached, and I did a message on this a while back, is uh, the fire right. furnace is the world. Mm -hmm. And they try to make you melt into it. They try, the world tries to forge you into something that you were never supposed to be. It tries to harden your heart and dry it out so that you're not affectionate, working, God's not working mightily in you if you're resisting him at every turn, mm -hmm. trying not to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, I love what they say to you. I love what they say to you. All right, now we're gonna go to Romans. <clears throat> So like, we're going to go to Romans 8.35. I bet you thought it was 3.16. I see you turning. <laughs> Romans 8.35. Well, let's start with 34. Romans 
Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even there at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Praise God that that's a promise. He maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For God so loved the world. And gave us Jesus right. Christ. For I am persuaded. I like that word. <clears throat> I am fully persuaded. I, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. No one can separate us, brethren, from the job from the three sixteen. Nothing. Right. Awesome. Not time, not eternity. Nothing. God still loves you. Amen. It says, uh, for God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. Christ went to the cross and died. Knowing that I, I was a sinner. Knowing that of all of the horrible things I would do. But also knowing that I would come to Him in repentance and humble my heart. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen.